Dear students, now we are going to discuss input impedance of zero dissipation line in detail. Input impedance is defined as the ratio of voltage to current of the dissipation less line. It is represented as Zs that is equal to V by I. Consider this as the first equation. Next we are going to derive the input impedance for the dissipation less line at high frequency range. For that we can consider the general equations for voltage and current on the dissipation less line. Dissipation less line is also known as zero dissipation line. Okay. We have already derived these two equations in the previous lecture video. So we can use those equations directly in this topic. So here the general equation for voltage V is equal to Vr cos beta x plus J Ir R naught sin beta x. I is equal to Ir cos beta x plus J Vr by R naught sin beta x. So we have already derived this. Okay. So now we are going to substitute these two equations in this first equation to get the input impedance for the dissipation less line. Here is that S is equal to V by I. We can substitute V value as Vr cos beta x plus J I R R naught sin beta x. I is equal to I R cos beta x plus J Vr by R naught sin beta x. Okay. So for further simplification, we can consider this Vr is equal to I R into Z R. Okay. So we can replace Vr in this V and I equations as I R into Z R. So here V R is replaced with I R into Z R. In the denominator, this V R is replaced with I R into Z R. Okay. So now I R is common in the numerator as well as in the denominator. We can take it outside. So here we can divide this I R value. Then we can get the value as Z R cos beta X plus J R naught sin beta X divided by cos beta X plus J Z R by R naught sin beta X. In the next step, we can take this R naught as a common one in the denominator. In the next step, we can take this R naught as a common one in the denominator. So here the numerator is as such. Here this denominator becomes R naught cos beta x plus J Z R sin beta x the whole divided by R naught. So the denominator of denominator is nothing but the numerator value. We can move this R naught to the numerator. Then we can get Z S is equal to R naught into Z R cos beta x plus J R naught sin beta x divided by R naught cos beta x plus J Z R sin beta x. So this is the input impedance of the zero dissipation line at high frequency. For further simplification we can divide the numerator and denominator by cos beta x. Then we can get Z is equal to R naught into here this value and this cancel. Here in the denominator cos beta x cos beta x divided. Then we can get the value sin beta x by cos beta x is nothing but tan beta x. So here finally we can get the input impedance for the dissipation less line is R naught into Z R plus J R naught tan beta x divided by R naught plus J Z R tan beta x. So this is the final formula for the input impedance. Okay. Consider this as the second one. So this formula is very very important one. So from this we can find out the input impedance for short circuiter line as well as for open circuiter line. First we are going to derive the input impedance of short circuiter line. For short circuiter line that receiving end impedance becomes zero. If it is short circuited means there is no impedance, the current is maximum, voltage is minimum. Do you all understand? You have to remember that for short circuited receiving end, the receiving end impedance becomes zero, current is maximum, voltage is minimum. Okay. So in that case, we can find out the input impedance of the short circuited line by substituting the ZR value as zero in the second equation. Then we can get the input impedance for the short circuited line Z S is equal to R naught into zero plus J R naught tan beta X divided by 
or not plus 0. Here result R becomes what? 0. Correct? Then we can get the values J R naught tan beta x divided by R naught. So R naught R naught can be divided. Finally, we can get Z S is equal to J into R naught tan beta x. It is purely imaginary value. So imaginary value represents only the reactance. For short circuiter line, the input impedance is purely reactance. Reactance means it can be either inductive reactance or capacitive reactance. So based on the wavelength, it can act as either inductive or capacitive reactant. So here it is based on the wavelength. Okay. So for the first quarter wavelength, the input impedance can act as an inductive reactant. For the next quarter wavelength, it can be a capacitive reactant. For the next one, it can be an inductive. So there is an alternate Values of capacitive and inductive reactances based on quarter wavelength. You all understand. So next we are going to derive the input impedance of open circuiter line. For open circuiter line, the receiving end impedance becomes infinite. Okay, so if it is open circuiter means the receiving end impedance becomes infinite. Here the voltage is maximum, current is minimum. Okay. The input impedance of open circuiter line can be obtained by substituting ZR value as infinite in the second equation. So we cannot substitute this ZR as infinite in that equation directly. If we are going to substitute this ZR value as infinite here, the whole term becomes infinite. Okay, so for that we can simplify the term further like this. So ZOC is equal to R0 into we can take this ZR outside because 1 by ZR means we can substitute this infinite value here. We can get the answer as 0. So for that we can make this ZR as a 1 by or anything by ZR. So here we can take ZR as a common one in the numerator and denominator. Then the term becomes 1 plus J R naught by ZR into tan beta x divided by here the denominator is ZR into R0 by ZR plus J tan beta x. Next we can substitute this ZR value as infinite in this equation. Then we can get ZOC is equal to R0 into 1 plus J. Here it is R0 right. So R0 divided by infinite tan beta x divided by R0 by infinite plus tan beta x. So anything by infinite is 0. So here it is 1 plus 0 divided by 0 plus j tan beta x. We can get the answer as R0 divided by j tan beta x. We can write that value as ZOC is equal to minus j. 1 by j can be written as minus j R0. 1 by tan is nothing but cot. Okay. So we can say the put impedance of the open circuiter line ZOC is equal to minus j r naught cot beta x is equal to r naught by j tan beta x. So here it is also a imaginary value. Imaginary means purely reactance value. For open circuiter line, the impedance is purely reactance. It can be either inductive or capacitive. So here we can have the diagrammatic representation of this impedance. For open circuiter line, for the first quarter wavelength, the input impedance can act as a capacitive reactance. For the next quarter wavelength, it can act as a inductive reactance. So here reactances alternate. So here the next quarter means it can be a capacitive. For the next quarter, it can be an inductance. So here the reactance values alternate every quarter wavelength. Hence, open circuiter line as well as short circuiter line both can be used as resonant circuits or tank circuit in the transmission line. Do you all understand this concept?